Hello, my name is Matt, and I wanted to show my process on how I get started with a new drawing and a new image. What I'll start doing next is I use a program called Pure Ref. And what's great about this reference program is it always stays on top. So as I click on the Photoshop, it doesn't disappear, which does take some getting used to. Open up a Pure Reference, a new one. I go into the client's file, grab all those, and I'll just start populating. So here's everything that we had from the consultation. During my consultation, I drew a sketch on an arm to kind of get the flow. Take that sketch and I uh, trace it, right? That's pretty common. And then there's my tracing. And this right here is what I'm going to work off of. Copy that, Control C, paste it into Photoshop. Um, I will take it and make it black and white. So I've got some hotkeys here. So now that it's black and white, Next thing I want to do is take some of the shine out so that it's easier to draw on. So I'll go to my levels and I will scoot the black in, scoot the brightest whites in, and then I'll play with the mid-tones until I get something that is not as contrasty. There we go. So all I'm doing is I'm just trying to get the general shape back so I can draw on top of that. Now that that's done, I have some references that she gave me and that we went through together on the consultation and these are cool and these are great um, but they're all photographs and i like to go and find other illustrations just to see how other people have problem solved um i'll start with the normal jellyfish and then we'll go vintage and then postcard is one of my favorite places to start and look at that already So, um, see some of these other ones. Some of these other ones, I just like the color, but the shape, I'm not really into. So right now, I'm just looking for shapes that are pretty cool. I do love that really kind of. So here's where I start photo bashing. And I'll go ahead and leave my pure reference behind for a second. We'll go into Photoshop. I'm going to grab this guy here. Copy, paste, transform. We're going to make him bigger. Flip that layer. We're going to go ahead and put it on multiply. And we're going to see how close my initial sketch was with something I can mess with a little bit. So I like that mushroom top a little bit more. And again, I'm just, I'm kind of just photo bashing. I'm gonna grab this, copy it, paste it, paste it again, have another one. And I'm gonna, actually I'm going to delete the bottom of the one that came with it. And I'm gonna start transforming Right click, distort, and see what I can do. So this is why I like starting in Photoshop, as you can see. It just instantly lets you start seeing imagery without having to discover it through thumbnail sketching. Which I'll go back and forth and use all of it. I'm not, I'm not into one or the other, but this will definitely give me a start. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the other one. I'm going to flip that one. I was saying I wanted to flip it yet. All right, so I'm going to flip that one. So you see what I'm doing here. Right click, go to warp. I want this to kind of come back a little bit. And for reference, I will pull up arm over here. And start just kind of looking at what her arm did and what I'm trying to do. And right there, I'm pretty satisfied. So what I'm gonna do is 
I'm just going to match all those layers together for her. Right now, I'm just kind of like trying to not ignore all the reference that's come before me. Use that uh, and come up with something that's more personal to this person. <clears throat> so between the photo bashing and good reference, um, the speed of just getting started for our drawing, that's where we're at. So um, I guess what I'll do is I will do a speed drawing on the back of this so that we can see how this ends up. And then we can see what the final drawing will look like. But from here, that's all I really want to talk about. All right, so now we've got everything kind of in place. I keep my reference right off to the left. Kind of know, it's like a it's like a visual map for me to know exactly where I'm drawing at and how my stencil relates to the arm. Uh, when I do these kind of quick drawings like this, uh, in the beginning, I'm, I'm only worried about trying to grab the flow of the design and then compare that to what the flow of the arm would be. Now, the thing with tattooing is you kind of have to exaggerate uh, some parts because when you actually go to make a stencil and tattoo it, it can look a little flat. So a lot of times when I'm laying out that initial shape, I'll exaggerate it so when it stencils, it you know still looks curvy and fun and has movement in life um, I love this photo bashing technique because it's a time saver and basically I can get the proportions um, a lot quicker than just staring at a reference and you know trying to figure out the architecture of whatever the design is I'm working on um, at this point uh, I'm drawing more with shape than trying to find the outside of the lines I've kind of defined the top which looks like a fancy boob at this point um, and now I'm just again getting that flow that goes down and the great thing about uh, drawing with shape is shape is the first thing that we see uh, when we look at anything any type of design and we don't really see the detail first so if the shape is solid then really whatever detail you put on there is just kind of icing on the cake so I'm testing it right now and figuring out what my push and my pull is with these shapes which little tentacles are gonna come up and which are gonna go back. In this case, uh, using the correct texture for jellyfish is important. So as a tattoo, you need room to actually color in the design and you need larger fields of color. So if you do a bunch of very thin strands, the outline itself will be more powerful than the coloring on the inside because there's gonna be so many strands and so much black because of that. Um, so by creating these larger shapes, I'm also thinking about field of color, um, not a particular color, cause you know, I'm not to that stage yet, but just making sure that when I look at it, I see a large uh, mass of color to kind of uh, weight down the tentacles. Um, I know they're supposed to be floaty and, and kind of breezing in the, you know, water winds, the currents and everything, but with any good structure you need that base and then you build off of the base so in this situation I'm drawing those thicker ones and that's going to be my base so now I've kind of got a general shape and I can turn off the reference that I was stealing the um, proportions off of um, and I'm again just kind of drawing a shape and building around uh, the tentacles that I just drew in this case um, i now started on another layer. I'm not big on tons of layers in my digital drawings. Uh, I try to use my eraser um, and try to make happy mistakes. I know in the beginning when I first started drawing digitally, um, you know, you, you would explore something, but what if it wasn't right? You would want to be able to revert to whatever last uh, stage you were at before you went exploring so that you didn't lose any progress. But I found that um, it actually slows down my drawing process by always having that revert button. Um, I mean, a couple of control Z's here and there is fine, but I do like um, kind of just constantly destroying what I make and going for it. Because the reality is the more chances I have to draw something that's unfamiliar, um, the more I'm going to understand it. Uh, so now the textures I'm putting around the larger tentacles in the back, I'm just trying to find something that's fun and something that kind of shows the, um, 
um, the, the stretch and the, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the opposite of stretch, <laughs> uh, the squish, the squish and the stretch. So as a straight line, um, it goes go straight down. You wouldn't have any squish or stretch, but if I bent that to one side or the other, one of it's going to squish and wrinkle up and the other side is going to stretch and kind of get thinner. So as I draw this texture uh, going down these larger tentacles, um, thinking about that, the squish and the stretch, and figuring out how that would affect these um, the um, texture that I'm trying to draw. And in this case, I'm pretty much just thinking of it as uh, flowers, you know, the edges of flowers, specifically like a peonies type flower. Um, because if I don't have like a frame of reference that, that I fully understand, then I don't really know where to start sometimes. So sometimes taking an image like a jellyfish, which I'm not gonna draw a lot, um, with flowers I draw all the time, I'll try to think of it like, you know, don't think of about it, about it like drawing a jellyfish, think about it more like uh, drawing a, a long flower petal. And then all of a sudden I can relax and draw freely. Um, I do that quite a bit actually, uh, because I do get intimidated by some of the images that I draw. And I think to myself, well, I don't know what this looks like, or I need more reference or, or whatever. Um, and that's a, that's a trap in itself where you can spend a lot of time looking for a reference and a little time actually trying to discover how the image is built and how, how you should attack it uh, as an illustrator. Um, so now I'm still kind of half shading half putting other textures in like those little dots and stuff because um, visually I'm, I want to see some push and pull and I want to see if the uh, if, if the legibility is starting to come through even though I'm doing something um, I'm, I'm doing something like here I'm drawing this little tail trying to figure out how it would swoosh and whoop up around and what that energy would be like at the end because I'm thinking of these like a larger whip you know that handle and as the whip goes down it's thicker and, and at the very end it's thinner and at that last very part you're going to see a lot more wave movement um, a lot more action at the very tip than you would in those uh those top parts i'm trying to take that into consideration too um that like ghostbuster symbol uh circle that i'm trying to avoid that would be an elbow uh, i'm not really a big fan of tattooing detail on elbows because they tend to you know fall out so i always try to do something simpler on an elbow and in this case i'm trying to see if i can just work around it and uh maybe do some background on the elbow or just maybe you know i don't know in this case if we're going to do background but um either way i don't I don't really want to have a lot of detail right there on the elbow um All right, so apparently the first part of that video, I did not have the microphone next to my mouth. But we can see here in the drawing uh, how I've used the photo bashing, the reference, the organizational skills to come up with a beginning. And that's all this is, is a beginning. There's um, going to be some tension and errors in this first draft. And then from there, um, you know, we just keep cleaning it up with every pass. One of the things I'd like to point out really quick is sticking to some of the basic structures of design. And if this was, for instance, I'm going to make this smaller. We have this motion. This is the biggest thing that I'm trying to keep is that, that shape there. Because from that shape, it turns into that shape. And then you have lead-ins. you know, to help with all that. And from this point on, what, what would I would do is I might just kind of start shading it a little bit to get some push pull. Just see really how the clunkiness can be refined with a push pull. Because sometimes even though this is a huge mass, you can start to break the mass up by dropping some things back like that. So huge mass, drop some of it back. 
And the shading kind of does that to keep it from, you know, keeping everything a little more legible. There's a lot of decisions that have to be made in the beginning. And having a good workflow is important. So I just want to share one of mine. I got a couple. That's one of my favorites.